हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी विल डिस्कस द फर्स्ट रिप दिस इज द शॉर्टेस्ट ब्रॉडेस्ट एंड मोस्ट कर्व रिप यू कैन सी इट इज फ्लैट एंड फ्रॉम अबाउ डाउनवर्ड सो दैट इट हैज टू सर्फेसिस यू कैन सी दिस इज द सुपीरियर सर्फेस दिस इज द इन्फीरियर सर्फेस इट हैज टू बॉर्डर्स दैट इज आउटर बॉर्डर एंड इनर बॉर्डर नो फॉर साइड डिटर्मिनेशन इफ वी सी द इंटीरियर एंड इज लार्जर एंड थिकर एंड पोस्टीरियर एंड इज स्मॉल एंड राउंडेड द आउटर बॉर्डर इज कॉन्वेक्स and inner border is convex the upper surface the superior surface of the rib is rough and inferior surface is smooth you can see so upper rough surface is there which is crossed obliquely by two shallow grooves you can see these are the two shallow grooves so which are separated by a ridge which forms a scalene tubercle at the inner border of the uh, this portion so when the rib is placed on horizontal surface like this so both the ends should touch the surface in wrongly so this is how we can determine that this is of which side that is keeping in uh, mind all the features which i have told you so this is of right side now if this rib is wrongly placed suppose it is placed like this the posterior end of the uh, rib is elevated you can see so it is not touching the ground clear so it is elevated one so both the ends they should touch the ground and the second important thing is you have to hold the rib if it is of right side you have to hold it in on in the right hand so it should be placed obliquely of uh, of, of about 45 degrees uh, of uh, angle so that it slopes downward and forward so this is the anatomical position of the rib it is of right side and placed like this now coming to the important attachments or relations of the shaft now i told you that it has rough superior surface which has two grooves two shallow grooves so this anterior shallow groove is for subclavian vein and posterior shallow groove is for subclavian artery along with lower trunk of brachial plexus now the anterior end of the superior surface now this is the superior surface this is the anterior end it is here the, there is the origin of subclavius muscle and there is attachment of costoclavicular ligament ligament behind this muscle so two structures they are adulated anteriorly and this scalene tubercle so this scalene tubercle is the end of that ridge which is separating these two grooves so it is receiving the insertion of scalenous anterior the rough area behind this groove that is this posterior groove this rough area is receiving the insertion of scalenous medius muscle now the lower surface of this or infer inferior surface of the rib is related to first intercostal nerve so this is regarding this now coming to the outer border now this outer border is giving origin to the external intercostal muscle and upper part of the first digitation of serratus anterior and inner border has attachment of the suprapleural membrane so these are the important relations of the shaft of first rib now coming to the neck portion so this is the neck this is the tubercle portion this is the head so this is neck portion now neck is providing attachment to the inferior costo transverse ligament so what is important next in neck case the important structures are related to the anterior surface of the neck from medial to lateral side so that is sympathetic chain from medial to lateral side so this is medial and this is lateral side sympathetic chain first posterior intercostal vein superior intercostal artery and first thoracic nerve so this is important i i again repeat the important relations of the anterior surface of the neck is that is sympathetic chain first posterior intercostal vein superior intercostal artery and first thoracic nerve now relations of the tubercle now this non articular portion of the tubercle is giving attachment to the lateral costo transverse ligament so these are the important relations of the first rib now coming to the ossification part now it ossifies from one primary center which is for the shaft so that appear by the 8th uh, week of intrauterine life and it has two secondary center one for head and one for tubercle so both these centers they appear by the age of 16 year and they fuses with the shaft by the age of 25 year so this is regarding the first rib now if we compare this a uh, rib with second rib now i will show you the second rib you can see so this if we compare it that the length of the second rib is twice of the first rib it is sharply curved 
but in this case what we have seen that it has superior surface and inferior surface but in this case it has outer surface which is convex and the twist is absent in this case because twist is there in case of typical rib you can compare it with typical rib too so a twist is there that is it is moving like this then it is rotating like this so in this case the twist is absent it has outer surface no doubt like typical rib but it is convex one but no twist is there then near its middle so this is the middle portion of the rib you can see there is a tubercle so this tubercle is giving attachment to the one and half digitations of serratus anterior and if we see the inner surface of the second rib it is smooth and concave so this is how we can differentiate the second rib from the first rib the first rib is almost flat and above downward but in this case the outer and inner surface is there but twist is absent because typical rib has a outer and inner surface we can differentiate this rib from this by absence of twist so second important thing is it has a broad tubercle you can see so no angle is there in second rib that is very important so tubercle is there which is giving attachment to one and half digitations of serratus anterior so this is regarding the different uh, ribs that is this is typical rib these are two first and second atypical now if we what we are left with other three uh, atypical rib is 10th 11th and 12th now in 10th rib if we see in typical rib you must have seen these two facets superior and inferior articular facet on the head but only difference for the 10th rib is that it has only one facet so it has one facet that is important and coming to the 11th and 12th rib both the ribs they have pointed end pointed anterior end otherwise in rest of the rib the anterior end is just broad so pointed rib end is there for 11th and 12th but only difference is in the size that is a one point is of size that is 11th rib is a little bit bigger than the 12th rib second important feature is the costal groove is present in 11th rib it's very shallow costal groove but in case of 12th rib that is absent otherwise rest of the feature they are same in both the ribs you have to differentiate these two ribs from other ribs only with the anterior end so next differentiation comes whether it is 11th or 12th then you can see the costal groove a shallow costal groove is present in the 11th rib which is absent in 12th rib and moreover the size and size of the 12th rib is very small it is just like this it is only this much size is there for 12th rib so the anterior and both the ribs that is same so these are the atypical ribs we have discussed the atypical ribs today that is first second then 10th 11th and 12th so how they are different from each other you can see so this is first this is second rib this is 11th rib so we are not having 10th and 12th but i told you the feature how they are different from that 10th rib has all the features of typical rib except one that is head has only one facet so that is the point so this is all about the ribs today thank you very much